great pleasure, I want to introduce an Aussie legend, a guy that grew up in the same town as me, Wollongong, um, Wayne Gardner, former professional Grand Prix motorcycle and touring car racer. Welcome, Wayne. Thank you. Thank you very much, Shane. It's a uh, pleasure to see you here, not in Wollongong, but in Monaco. Well, mate, so you know, there's only two people that I know of that had the keys, keys to Wollongong. It's you and me. Well, we are privileged. Um, I'm not so sure the, the locks are the same, but I've got a key this big. You've probably got a key this big, have you? Well, how big is it? Is it big? Oh, it is big. <laughs> it is, so mate. how big is it? Well, it's, it's pretty big, but it goes all right. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, um, do you know what that means? Apparently, if you had the key to a city, mm. you're allowed to walk a flock of sheep down the street without a any recourse. Sheep? A, yeah, a, a flock of sheep? A flock of sheep. A flock of sheep. Flock of fucking fuck sheep, is it? That's it, mate. Uh, so maybe we'll do that one day. Yeah, let's do that together. Yeah, that'd be good, mate. With our keys, yeah. Mate, firstly, um, we're really privileged to be here in Monaco. You actually live here now? Yes, I've been here a long time, uh, since 1986. Okay. Uh, when I first started my Grand Prix career um, many, many, many moons ago. Um, and I've been privileged to be here for a long time. And uh, I left a very short period, and then I'm back here now. Uh, um, I went back to Australia and raised my two um, beautiful kids, yeah. two beautiful boys, Remy and Luca. And uh, they gathered up an interest for motorbikes and came back to Europe, to Spain. And, and from, there, uh, well, from there, I got divorced. And then from divorced, I come up here and been back here since. So it's a, it's a pleasure to be here and, and I'm proud of it. You know, it's a now, great place. And we, we, all, we all understand you're a MotoGP guy. We're here for Formula One. But yeah. For, why is Monaco, in, in your opinion, why is it such a main event in, in the Formula One circuit? Uh, look, I think there's a, a, a big historic um, yeah. trail on, on this whole thing. It started, I don't know how many years, but a long, 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 long time. 1929, I think it kicked 1929, off. 1929, yeah. there you go. Yeah. So um, it was cobbled roads and so on around here at oh, that right. point. It's obviously changed over the years to uh, keep up with the technology of the vehicles. Um, you know, it's, it's, a, in the, it's a street track. Um, it's very uh, a very beautiful place, as you know. Um, it's a tax haven here, and it's yep. a, an amazing palace. And the Prince Albert is up on the hill here. Um, it's a great pleasure to be here, and I'm very proud of it. And um, they have some great, not only Formula One, but they have other great sporting events here. Um, it's 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 continuous throughout the year on all this platform You're over here that just in down the here, they bring yeah. in the, 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 the they bring in horse show jumping, show jumping and, and max chopping yeah. and uh, ice skating and uh, circuses uh, uh, Christmas specials uh, ice rings yep. uh, it goes on and on and on you know so the place is very very versatile they're very clever people here and to be able to put on so many entertaining events and to get the people into the city the city brings um, tourism money and the, the city gets bigger mate really doing a bit of research for the podcast and reading through your achievements you know from 987 you won your first 500 cc right through to having your own team to touring cars is, is, there, is there a moment or, or, or an event or, or a win that stands out most for you in bikes or cars or well, well either mate oh either. Uh, look without a doubt one of the pinnacle events for me is obviously the two philip island yeah. victories yeah. in 89 and 90 yeah um, the the set the the first one was really special because it was the first race and and the event was put on because uh, Bob Barnard um, the the promoter came to me saying oh, look I want to build a, a track out of uh, uh, down at Phillip Island and an old goat track that's there yes and I thought he was a lunatic and uh, <laughs> he said come down and have a look which I did and um, I just laughed and said it was it was over it was run over and gr grass was going through and there was sheep all over the place and I said, oh, you'll never build something out of this. It's a good layout, but I said, you'll never be able to do this in time because he did it under 12 months. Wow. So, which was quite a, a feat. Yeah. And he said, you, he said, I'll go ahead and build the track and you go and do all the marketing and promotion and I want to get this across with the government support and funding and of course it you went did. from there and yeah. and we did it and of course then the icing on the cake was to go and um, win the win the first race yeah, and amazing. and then on top of that I won the second race with a with a broken wrist at the time uh, which I broke uh, two weeks before in Czechoslovakia in practice and but I raced and I finished second so uh, the doctor said he didn't want me to race uh, in Philip Bowen but I said what would I, can't, I can't do that no. I said that's just <laughs> not on Brilliant. so the, listen this is a true story yeah. Uh, so I said, uh, all right. And the doctor said, you're not going to make it. So I said, all right, I'll go out and do five laps for the race and keep the fans happy, and then I'll pull in. 
He goes, okay. So I had uh, 25 injections in my wrist, small, oh, wow. small painkilling injections and some uh, tablets. <clears throat> so I was kind of loaded up for the pain. And on my right wrist too, my my my, um, that, yeah. my throttle wrist. And uh, I went, okay, the plan is I'm gonna go there and just do five laps and pull in, you know? Yeah. And and then the race started and then I was dicing with Mick and, and then I see Mick starting to disappear. My wrist was getting sore and, and I couldn't keep up. And I went, you know, I, I'm not gonna make yeah. this. And yeah. then I went, wow, but now I have to give my crown up to Mick and and I went <laughs> no I'm not yeah in. the competitive juices and uh, yeah I'm not going to let that happen so I kind of bit the bullet and uh, decided that I was going to fight through the pain and um, I rested my hand um, down the throttle down the straights at yep. 330 yeah, yeah. kilometers an hour resting my fingers trying to get the feeling back on my fingers so I could feel the front brake. Yeah. And then once I did that for, you know, five or seven or something laps, and then I thought, ah, oh, it's coming back. Actually, it feels not so bad. And then I then put my head down to see if I could catch up the three or four seconds, yep. I guess, I'd lost. And um, and I just and then I decided that it was one of those um, special moments where I convinced myself that it doesn't hurt. And I, yeah, I just amazing. said, okay, here we go. When the pain happens, it doesn't hurt. When the pain happens, it doesn't hurt. I'm going to deal with it after, deal with it after, after the race. And I just went through that barrier and uh, had this sort of out-of-body experience that, yeah, here I we go, that, I'm, that, mate, yeah. and, I'm, and I pushed through it and something else came over me and I just kept riding on another level that I didn't think that I had. And I caught and passed Mick. Uh, and when I passed him, the fairing was broken on my bike and it was half hanging off. So the draft of the bike was sort of sucking you in. When I passed Mick, the vacuum of the, uh, the, the, the marshals are talking about actually black flagging me because the fairing was dragging on the ground. Right. But they held off because it was Wayne Gardner. He was yeah. f fighting for the lead. So it was a bit like the Wacky Races. It, it was a bit like <laughs> Wacky Races, man. So, and I love that TV show. Yeah. Um, it, it was dragging on the ground. I didn't know that. I was just going as hard as I could. However, the bike was kind of steering left down the straight. It wanted to go towards the infield. But I just kept kept everything try and tidy and smooth as possible. Past Mick kept my head down and put, and put my head with it two or three laps to go I made a gap on him and tried not to make a mistake uh, pushing as hard as I could and yeah mixed very fast yeah. and uh, and I managed to go on and uh, win story, by mate. I don't know half a second or a second or something so uh, pretty special moment in my life and to back it up on on the 89 victory mate that's, that's an amazing story and I think I, I can relate to that being a cricketer but the, the times when you think you're not quite right or you're not feeling well or your preparation hasn't been perfect and you actually convince yourself, as you said, to push through those whatever issues they are with us mentally, physically, and then you, you come through it. Uh, it's yeah, very but, satisfying. Yeah, it is. It is satisfying. But, you know, I, I went in there with the objective to, to actually stop after five. Yeah. But but the yeah, the, the pride, yeah, the pride right. and, yeah. the, you know, this place is here because of my career and because of my mm. following. And, my pride was I'm stubborn and yeah. um, and I went no I'm going to give it my best shot I'm going to give it everything so obviously I went on to victory and the Monday morning I flew back to Sydney after the partying and the celebrations yeah. and so on and it was one of those really really special moments in my life and probably one of the special moments personally because I was riding injured and I shouldn't have been mm. riding so one of my mates on Monday morning rang me um, Didier Drodigas and he, who's another rider, and he said, oh, have you had your wrist checked? I said, no, 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 I haven't. He said, oh, he said, if I was you, I'd get it checked. Sure. So when I arrived in Sydney, I went to North Shore Hospital and um, I went to see a specialist and, um, and I, he said, and they put under an X-ray and had a look and he said, oh, get into bed. And I said, what do you mean? He goes, oh, <laughs> it's, it's very, very serious. He yeah. said, you gotta, you're going to lose the use of your wrist completely Jeez. for the rest of your life if we don't do something like now. And I went, oh, really? So I got into bed and um, woke up the next morning. And as you can see by the scar yeah, on my wrist. Massive scar, scar um, yeah. and, they, and what happened is my um, scaphoid bone had broken in half uh, oh. two weeks before. And the massive load that goes through your body when you're riding these bikes, because you're under braking two, two and a half G. So it's, it, it's, it's been a real punishment for the injury. And, uh, and they operated and I woke up in the morning and they'd opened me up on my hip and 
got a hammer and chisel and chiseled off pieces off my off my pelvis bone and they packed it into my wrist and put a, a thing called a herbert screw with a left and right um, screw into it and they pulled it together and I woke up um, I wasn't sure what hurt more my yeah, wrist hip, yeah. it was hung up in a sling yeah. or where they've been built me with a hammer and chisel you know in my in my pelvis and I said what happened last night I got hit by a train or something <laughs> so anyway the the good news was I had a couple of days there and and um it was my it was my way of celebrating the victory and uh, I got out good and at least it was done then you know and and it's never been really a problem after that and in fact the screw is still in there and as you can see by yes. the scar you know you, you so. were, we were saying off air before so you you've spent like your whole career over doing over 300 kilometres an hour yeah. and you said you broke, you've broken 40 to 50 well, fractures or bones over the years so, so how's your body now overall? Yeah I don't have an exact number but yeah. I, I kind of did a calculation one day and you know multiple fractures all yeah. over um, nothing 40, 40 to 50 somewhere in there um, it's a and, lot. but they were yeah they were animals those bikes and they're oh, yeah. highly fast um, and yeah, but I had good doctors around me, and I was also motivated to get off my butt and get back on the bike as soon as possible. And us guys, us bike riders, MotoGP riders, we're maniacs because we we do anything for pain um, or deal with the pain to get everything done, the, the job dusted, you know. So uh, you push your way through it. And how am I now? Um, I'm surprisingly really good. Yeah, you seem pretty good. No, I'm surprisingly good. I've had fractured legs and yeah. ankles and wrists, as you can see, and yep. collarbones. And uh, <laughs> I actually had an X-ray the day, my first time ever, on my spine. Yep. And I've got. I've, I didn't know that I've had three, three fractures. fractures in my yeah. back. In my back. So I've had the guy, a doctor, said to me, he said, "You know, you've had three times a broken back." Yeah. I went, "Really?" And he goes, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." I said, "I didn't know." He said, "Can you touch your toes?" I went, "Yeah." He yeah. said. Wow, he said, you have any problems with us? I said, no. He said, what are you doing? I said, well, I go to the gym and I exercise. Yeah. He said, keep doing it because yeah. you should be more crippled up than what you are. And I don't have a problem. No, you're so, lucky. Touch you know, it's a, I think two things. One is exercise and one is uh, as you get older, you've got to stretch more. Yeah, I agree. And, and three, you've got to have a positive mind. Yeah, yeah. Now, you, you mentioned um, your sons before, Rem, Remy and Luca, and Remy was a um, uh, world champion. Uh, um, Moto 2. Ma yes. Moto 2, yeah. But um, how do you... Um, you're talking about all the injuries that you had, and then you see your sons riding off at speed. Did you feel fear for them, or how did oh, you feel as a dad? Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. I, I, I discouraged them as much as I could yep. because I know what the sport takes. It, yeah. It's, it's a body killer, and any of the GP riders have injuries that are ongoing forever. Um, uh, but as I said, I think I found the solution through constant exercise. Yeah. However, you know, um, I know, for example, Christian Saron, he's been and had back operations. I know that some of them have had hand operations. Yeah. They've got fingers missing. Um, Mick, Mick Doohan, he's got, uh, you know, smashed up legs. Uh, his ankle doesn't work anymore. So it's everyone's got problems yeah. that they yeah. take with them. Um, I obviously I try to protect my children like every parent. Would. But you, but you think because you said before you're very stubborn, and the fact that you try and say to them I don't want you to do it, then they probably did do it. <laughs> Unfortunately, they've got my genes, you know. Yeah. So yeah, I couldn't tell them. Yeah. Um, Remy wanted Remy's Remy's like me. He wants to prove a point. Yep. Uh, and um, he's he's very stubborn. Um, but you know, however, he's lost his direction at the moment. But. But you know you've got to have this stubborn attitude. Um, you've got to be you. You got to have the passion that's uh, I will win at any any cost. You do, mate. Um, w within limits, you know what I mean. Yeah. With it, with it, without obviously getting your life taken. But it's a very exciting sport. It's very thrilling. It's very exciting. Um, I think there's no other sport like it, and it's amazing TV to watch. It is. And for anyone who hasn't watched MotoGP racing, it's or been there to see it how fast they are. Uh, their top speed now is like 370, 80 Jeez. kilometers an hour. It's insane. And and every year they're going another, you know, three, four, five kilometers an hour faster. So the sports um, really, truly is faster than Formula One. The corner speed on Formula One is uh, greater because yep. they're on four sure, wheels. Sure, yes. But in top speed and acceleration, MotoGP strips them, you know, big time. So we're here on behalf of sports.com, and I know you're, you're going to become involved with them moving forward, um, which is really, really exciting. But where do you see motor racing as a whole, both MotoGP and, and Formula One, going in the future? Can, can it, is it sustainable, um, the growth? Because it seems to be getting bigger and bigger year on year. 
Is it, is it going to be a ceiling? Well, there is, or it's, it has been growing for a long, yeah. long, long, long yeah. time. I think the huge growth now, because we've been in COVID for three, four years. Yep. Um, I think that everyone's enthusiastic yes, about it. To get back to they, the track. They've been they've been on a diet of watching it on yeah, TV. Yeah, There's well been said. nothing watching yep. old races, yep. uh, cars, bikes, or whatever. And I think that everyone's and now Formula One have brought out a new packages and in, in their marketing yep. and how they're selling it to the audience. Uh, MotoGP is as well. Um, so I think that. It's kind of like, uh, you know, in a sense, COVID was probably a good thing for motorsport because people realise that they miss that and they want to be part of it. So that's why I wanted to come this year because I knew it was going to be a huge yeah, year here, yeah. you know? That's what's well said. Um, because it's, 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 it's truly on and it's huge here, as you can probably see by the amount of boats and people. So <laughs> I think the future is very, very big for the mm. sport. I always think that, you know, I always wanted to be part of MotoGP. Yes. Um, because I think, and I seen it prior to Dawn of buying it, and I was friends with Bernie Eccleston. And, yep. Um, and so I was always interested in the business behind the scene. So when I seen Dawn and got it, I, you know, I watched and they've done a great job to grow it. And, uh, and they put a really good package and with a lot of funding behind it. And now they've got some more marketing people I hear from Formula One as well. Yeah. So I think that both the four wheels and the two wheels, the pinnacle of four wheels and two wheels, have got a good package together now. And, um, uh, and in a small way, um, uh, apart from my son being involved yep. in the past, but in a small way, I'm involved now with... Uh, with sports.com. Yeah, fantastic, mate. And I, I was laughing before you, um, we got on the, we're on a beautiful big super yacht here, and you got two of your mates over from Australia, the two Marks. Uh, two, yeah, two Aussies, well, it's mate. Mark 1, Mark 2, I call them. And, or it should be Mac 1, and Mac the, 1, and 2. And they reckon, well, Mark 1 said he's um, he's just uh, been made redundant. He says he's living with you now. Do you, do you know about that? Oh, uh, yeah, well, I've, um, I've adopted them, actually. Uh, yeah, I've got a, a couple of places over here, and um, uh, and uh, they're living down with me in my apartment down in Cannes. And, Fantastic, uh, mate. And, and up here as well in Monaco. So... Uh, yeah, no, they're good, my, my good friends, and they're having a good time, and uh, I'm showing them the roads and yeah. trying to keep them out of trouble. Well you know, so. Mate, Wayne, I, I want to thank you, firstly, for coming on uh, the podcast, but I want to thank you, um, being a boy from Wollongong, I was a few years younger, you were a real idol for me growing up. Uh, my... I was younger or you were younger? Yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> he's in good nick. He's also, he's also very cheeky, but, um, but um, you, you, you were a guy that Who's showed... Who's got the most grey hair, may I say? Ah, <laughs> uh, me. Yeah. <laughs> but you, you were a guy that showed me as a young kid from Wollongong, um, that uh, the, the world is a lot bigger than that that, that little area, and you, and you showed me that to, to dream big, which I did. So I want to thank you for that, mate. That's oh, amazing. My pleasure. That's yeah. true. I, 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 that's one, some of my rules or inspirational, you know, chats that I give to yeah. seminars and to people and groups and so on. But the world's a small place, it uh, is. and reach for the stars yeah. because if you have big enough dreams, most important thing is you've got to start off with a huge dream. Yeah. And it may you may not achieve everything, but if you start reaching for the stars, you'll at least get halfway. Yeah. You know, at least, and and if not more, and if you're and you're very determined, like I am, and you know, life's it's there's, it's not easy to be successful. No. You got to go out and put the hard work in. Yep. Do everything. And if you put the hard work in and you dream big. Yeah. Life, life gives you the rewards. It does. It does. You know. It does. Well, you're a superstar. You got way more than halfway, mate. We're really proud of you. Thanks, <laughs> Thank Wayne. you. Thank, Thank you, Scott. No worries. Pleasure. Thanks for tuning in to Afternoon Sport Monaco series. Don't miss an episode. Find us wherever you listen to your podcasts on YouTube or any of our social media platforms. AfternoonSport.com.